let's talk about Michael Jackson. Enough <laughs> is enough. Am I right? What do you mean? <laughs> I've had it with the coverage. I've had enough Michael Jackson coverage. My concern the coverage. is... The coverage? The coverage, yeah. Oh, did you know that he died? Is Michael Jackson dead? Oh, my God, I'm no. sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, my primary okay. concern is that they're going to... What happens is, is that they're going to kill him again. Is that he died, people who connect with his music, they mourn, and then they get to watch his character assassinated and ripped apart by wolves who have nothing better to talk about. Well... Boy, that's so. You feel that you, you, your fear is that people are going to like reinvestigate his life in a way and sort of dissect all these aspects of his strangeness and in a way, but destroy his murderous character. Is well, that, well, it's it's the thing about me with Michael Jackson. I it doesn't resonate with me. I didn't listen to his music really at all. I seem to miss a lot of things. I miss that. You know, I remember it vaguely. I have no emotions connected to it, so I don't have any real grief uh, of the passing. And my feeling about him is that for the past 10 or 15 years, I, I've just seen a, a cry for help by a guy that was somehow slowly self-destructing in some peculiar way. Well, the, the thing is, I feel whenever a situation like this happens, is that you say you, say you felt no grief. I feel a lot of people construct grief. Okay. I feel that an event like this happens. This major figure dies. And there's no question he's not a major figure. He dies and it's news, okay? So they start watching now, the, because of the amount of media we have, they're seeing, uh, almost by default, this wall-to-wall -wall coverage. There's, it's on eight or nine channels, and it's all over the radio, and it's all over the internet. And now it's all over this show. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people, I think, look at this, and they, they, they get this sense that, well, the death of this guy, um, it, is, it's this important cultural moment. He means so much to people. I want to be involved in this. So they recreate their narrative with Michael Jackson. I mean, Thriller was this huge record. By the time Bad had come out, it had already sold like 28 or 27 million copies, I think. So it was a record everybody feels they had a, a, a little context for, they understand. Sure. But I see all these people who have not mentioned Michael Jackson once in 20 years. Right. Are suddenly having this, this kind of emotional reaction that, boy, they're, you know, that, that he defined their childhood. Or that, that, that mm. you know, they saw the 25th anniversary Motown special and it, it, it changed their life forever and it changed the life of everyone. I just think it's really weird when a public figure dies like this and people try to use uh, the individual's death as a way to rewrite their own memory of their life. But that's the weird part to me. I but, mean... But let me ask you a question around that, because it seems to me that, that for you, like even when I read Fargo Rock City, that, that we know, you know certainly, that there's something about music that is, is magical that beyond any other form, mm -hmm. and that it, it is one of the few things that can elicit an emotional response and also marks moments in personal history, uh, either emotional or otherwise, so that I think some of that is, is honest. I mean, I understand the sort of narcissism of, like, you know, appropriating emotionally this thing so you can talk about it, but... The question is, in honesty, I don't feel like the people are lying. Right. I feel like that they're really just changing their own memory of the experience. That now they think back to a period when maybe they were in 7th or 8th grade and they were playing Billie Jean or Beat It at a Dance. Right. In the past, their memory of that dance had probably to do with the people they were with or what was going on in their life. Now but a, now they're attaching right. this element of Michael Jackson, and that becomes the overwhelming memory that this thing, because they want to have been part of this. They see other people sort of reacting to this. They see the world sort of responding to Michael Jackson's death as this kind of traumatic, meaningful event. And they just sort of, like, the unconscious desire is to have also been part of this. You know? well, but but yeah. weren't they? I mean, isn't that just a legitimate grief? I mean, to have that moment, like, all of a sudden you have this great memory and you're reminded of it because a guy dies, and now that memory is sort of, like, becomes even more nostalgic, more melancholy, because now it's infused with a sort of sorrow that the guy that gave it to you is dead. Well, but yeah, but you're describing what's happening, and that's, to me, that that's unreal to me. Right. That's not that's not a real reaction. I, I you know that I really do feel this is something that can be blamed. This especially this sort of syndrome or phenomenon really can be blamed on the media and the size of media, because you know when you looked at when John Lennon died, for example, um, that was news on the three networks. Um, they didn't. They. I don't. I, I'm not sure if I'm misremembering this, but they, there wasn't a lot of breaking away from their usual coverage. See, that's it was a tricky thing about memory, isn't there? It's yeah. that like memories themselves. Are, are manufactured exactly. Yeah, you know, but uh, the fact of the matter is, there was a limited amount of information about. It, so people sort of were, 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 of course, shocked and devastated. But uh, 
they weren't there was no mechanism convincing them that this is supposed to maybe be a bigger event than they realized and if they want to be part of culture at large they need to sort of embrace the reaction is. I mean, I don't want to mitigate Michael Jackson's death. I mean, I, I, I am a Michael Jackson fan. I think that, for, I mean, when you look at pure talent, for like pure uh, entertainment talent, especially in a, a situation where he's performing on stage, you know, he's probably number one. I, I'm, I, was, I got asked this question yesterday. I said, like, well, he's, I don't know who'd be number two. I mean, like, Iggy and the Stooges around one period, Kiss in 78 and stuff. There, there, there's people who were, there were, did this kind of dramatic. Um, kind Stage of game changing crap. situation yeah. and he would be right up there you know but I I'm surprised by how people uh, just want this to be an emotional experience. so I think what, what you're actually saying is that because of the coverage and because of the the parasitical nature and the amount of information that is out in the new media that there's an imposition uh, on you to feel yes. whereas actually I think when the media industry was more intimate and it was only three networks you know, I think honestly, probably just as many people proportionately eventually got the news and experienced the same grief at the same level, but it was actually a more personal experience. Oh, totally. Uh, one thing that I've thought about is I'd mentioned the Motown 25th anniversary special. I think one of the reasons that people really do remember that so vividly, and, and or when they see it again, it's really jarring to them, you know, it's because, you know, that was in that period before, obviously, DVRs and TiVo, really even before VCRs. And if you watch the clip of Michael Jackson performing Billie Jean when he moonwalks, all of a sudden you just hear the crowd lose their mind, right? And that, yeah. that, you know, as soon as that happens. And it's hard to imagine a period where if you saw something like that, you would say, what just happened? I guess I'll never know. Right. Like, I won't, like, like, maybe they'll show it on the news, but probably not. Right, you right. Know? Um, and, and there, you know, now if something like that happened, it would, people would stop it. They would have moved back. They'd watch him moonwalk 10 times in real time, you know, like, you know, right as the event's right. happening. It would then be on YouTube immediately. It would be on. I'm watching it now. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so I think that that's, you know, uh, in a way, it's disappointing. You know, I, I don't know if there can be moments like that again, not just because we've lost Michael Jackson, but we've lost the ability for people to have these moments that seem fleeting and magical. But you know. They have their own relationship with the moment as opposed to, I think a lot of what you're talking about is the surrendering of, of personal consciousness to this mediated consciousness. Yes. And, and that it, you, you become adaptive to it mm -hmm. and you no longer guide your, there's no peace. There's no time to reflect. Like, you know, Lennon obviously is a different story. He was, he was murdered for no yeah. reason. Right. You know, he represented, a, you know, not only musically, but, you know, socially an amazing arc of change. And, and he was, you know, a lot of people's connect. I mean, despite whatever Michael Jackson did, he did not write Imagine. Mm. And, and it did not have the same, you know, like, you know, when, when Lennon, you know, the, the crossing of, you know, from the 60s to the 70s. I mean, it was Well, the, and the murder game. is a, you can't, you can't overrate yeah. the emphasis of that on how it changes. Well, well,